I don't care how many arrests they've made. I don't care how many felony prosecutions. The strategy isn't working. Now at five, changing the drug culture of San Francisco's Tenderloin neighborhood. That is the goal of San Francisco's new district attorney tonight. How is their strategy working so far? The question comes as a man living in the neighborhood says he's paying the price for capturing drug dealers in the act. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Meebach. And I'm Julie Hayner. KTV's Christian Captain joins us now live from San Francisco. And Christian, this all leads to a broader discussion of whether the Tenderloin is improving with a new DA in office. Yeah, San Franciscans are just beginning to get a sense of how the new district attorney and the impact she is making on the city and on the Tenderloin targeting felony drug dealers trying to get, she says, to the root of the problem. The video is startling. The neighbor Smile. who recently moved to the Tenderloin shot the video and says the men on the street are drug dealers. He's repeatedly told to stop dealing in front of his apartment building. When he lets them know he's recording, one of the men hurls a knife at the window, shattering it. Hopefully uh, we can build a case around what's going on in the neighborhood. Hopefully I can help the DA. Hopefully I can help the police with the evidence they need to just bring down what's going on out there because it's, it's not good. District Attorney Brooke Jenkins says since she was sworn in in July, her office has filed 125 felony drug cases, holding five of those defendants before trial. She says following two years under District Attorney Chase Boudin, her office is now cracking down on repeat offenders, and it will take them getting rearrested and working their way through the judicial system to start seeing changes in the tenderloin. Now we are obviously handling things differently, and so as that continues to happen, you will see uh, stiffer pretrial um, handling of those of those defendants and so that will too um, lead to a, something visible on the street. Randy Shaw from the Tenderloin Housing Clinic says he's hopeful that DA Jenkins will make a difference but that for now it's simply too early to tell. The true measure of success Shaw says will be simply going out onto the streets to see if drugs are still being dealt out in the open not official data from law enforcement. I don't care how many arrests they've made. I don't care how many felony prosecutions. The strategy isn't working. The goal is to close the drug markets, and that's what we have to see. The police department has said it will do what it can to make sure there's a visible police presence in the Tenderloin. We have a staffing issue in San Francisco. We're short of over 500 officers. Given the fact that we have the staffing shortage, we still are doing our very best to make sure that there are police present in the Tenderloin. The district attorney and police all say that they're trying to work together to try to tackle this problem. But here's what we don't have answers to at this point. Are the police making more arrests in the Tenderloin no. than in years past? And will D.A. Jenkins' office prosecute more drug cases than her predecessor? And finally, will jail time for dealers make the difference in the Tenderloin? We will continue to ask for answers on this issue from city leaders in the coming weeks and months. We're live in San Francisco. Christian Kaftan, KTVU, Fox 2 News. Yeah, Christian, and for people like that man who took that video, do we know if he's trying to share that video with the DA's office or police or if he's heard anything back and whether he feels safe actually continuing to do stuff like that? Yeah, at this point, I don't know what the response from the police department or from the district attorney's office, if he's had a chance to share it with them, has been to this latest video. He has said that in the past he's tried to reach out to the police. He says he's called 911 when he's seen dealers on his uh, front porch there in his front uh, of his building. He says they've told him in the past that because it's not an emergency situation, they're not going to respond quickly. All right, and you can understand why that can be frustrating, doing it in broad daylight right on the street there in front of where he lives and throwing knives at his windows. Christian, thank you.